Welcome to the vacation people who just came last week. So how was your vacation? How was your uh, trip to Manila, trip to the Philippines? I hope it all went well. So glory to God once again. We are here in the presence of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, before I proceed to our message this morning, I would like you to look at your neighbor and say, I am blessed because you are here today. I am blessed. How good and beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in peace and harmony as the word of God says. Amen. So today, uh, our message is the last message of what our series is all about. Our topic is all about to those brethren who hasn't been with us. We are studying in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, we understand that is written by no other than half of it is written by David. And this is also the longest book in the Bible. It has 150 chapters. Last week, we studied about, about uh, Psalms 78. Can God prepare a table for us in the wilderness? Or in trials, can God make a way for us? Well, definitely the answer to that question is yes. And today, we're going to study about when the foundations are destroyed. And this is in Psalm chapter 11. And once again, I would like us to stand up for reading the Word of God, in honor of reading the Word of God. And we read in Psalms 11, starting in verse 1, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows, they set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. The Lord is in holy temple, the Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind would be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. You may be seated. Father, thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. I pray that you will just... Give us insight, open our spiritual understanding that we may understand your word this morning. The message that you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. There was a war film. I don't know if you watched that. The name of that movie or the title of that movie was Force Ten from Navarone. The star, it was star-studded film uh, headed or starred by no other than Harrison Ford. Who knows Harrison Ford? We love Harrison Ford. His movies, right? Uh, there are so many movies that Harrison Ford did. So this is a star-studded movie about a war movie in which this is actually a war movie. And there was in that movie in a bridge that uh, very essential in winning the war against the Nazis. So in that movie, the climax of that movie actually was they had to blow up that bridge. They had to blow up that bridge. See that bridge at the background? They had to blow that up. but. When they look at the bag that they have, there are only a few pieces of dynamite. And so, he said, it's impossible to destroy the foundation or destroy that bridge. So what they did is that they had another idea. They went to a place, the dam near to that bridge. You see, most of the bridge, that's why they make bridge, because there are rivers. That's right, amen? So they have few dynamites on them, <coughs> So they go to a, the foot of or near the dam, and then they place that few numbers of dynamites with them, and then they lit it up, and then run, and then hear a very, very loud voice, a, ba a loud bang, and then after a few seconds, they're expecting the dam to explode, but nothing happened. So they panic because the German troops, the Nazis with all their tanks and jeeps, are already crossing the bridge. And if they will cross that bridge, they will definitely lose the war against the Nazis. It is a bridge actually connecting Yugoslavia because that time Hitler and his troops were already conquering all the whole of Europe. So the demolition team says, relax, take it easy. 
So after a few minutes, they found cracks at the dam, and then suddenly the, the dam just explode and then make a very, very strong torrent in which even the good guys run for their lives because it was so strong that they would be swept away. They hardly make it to the top of the hill. <coughs> and then, of course, the climax of the movie was all the Nazis on that bridge collapsed with them and they were all drowned with a strong torrent of water. So it comes to this mind in our text this morning, what can the righteous do in times of when the foundation is destroyed? Here we're going to study about what's going on with our society, with our lives, with our community, with our nation. We see now, things are not getting better. I believe you would agree with me. Things are not getting better. Societies, moral values are already being or disappearing in our very own eyes. Amen? Even just, I went home and I said, I'm culture shocked. Because this is not Philippines before. This is not the way our things go their way. This is not the way I was raised up. I don't know because maybe I've been away in our country for the last 21 years. But I, I know that you would agree with me, those who just been in the Philippines. Or in other parts of the world. Or in other parts of the country. Even in America right now. See, what can the righteous do when... The foundations of the Word of God as being mocked by people, mocked by government, mocked by different societies because what? Because they don't approve of what God is saying according to His Word. See, there is a quote here that says, When a nation celebrates what God condemns, judgment from on high must eventually come. This is true. You see now in America, they have been approving states after states. There are 51 states in America and most states now are legalizing same-sex marriage. See, this is against the word of God. For God only made man and woman. He made only Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? He made Adam and Eve. So now, the government, and even right now in California, they are already legalizing marijuana. Imagine the judge that put your son 20 years ago because of smoking pot is now the same man who is smoking marijuana because it's legalized. You see how what is happening to our society right now? The foundation are destroyed. The, the word of God is being dis destroyed. The moral values of people are being lost. The, our children now are lost. Because why? They don't have, because now they don't have the firm foundation that God has placed in every family and every heart of men. This is what is happening around us. Look at, open your eyes. People are getting greedier, selfish at every time or every moment. In this story, actually, if you will look back at, this, at, the, at the verse, see, on verse 1, it says here that, that, that the Lord take refuge. How can you say to me? This is David, actually. This is a time when David was actually fleeing from Saul. We, we all know that what happened to Saul and David. Saul got envy because David was anointed king over Israel. So he, he runs or he chased Saul to David to kill him. So David every time went from cave to cave. But this time, this time he says, and he was actually advised, the counsel that he got from, from his friends, his close friends, his family said, flee from the mountain. Flee from your life. You know the word here, the Lord, I, in the Lord I take refuge. The word refuge here says that to run for protection, to run for cover. And this is mostly what we do when we are in danger, right? Just like the story when the dam was exploded and the water just just waved or just uh, had go through this very strong torrent, they all ran for their life. This is what we do usually when the foundations, when, when buildings collapse, when there are earthquakes, very strong earthquakes, what we do is to get out, to run, right? 
This is what happened in this scripture. It says here from the friends, this is actually a, a counsel to fear. And we know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. This is in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Amen? So David understand that he needs to run for his life. David understand that his friend was just after his welfare, his concern. They are concerned for his life. But you know what? There are times that we need to stand with our faith. There are times here David did not exhibit distrust from his God. He says, how can they say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? And then he did, his friend again repeated this word. For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the string to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. In heart. When the foundation are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can they be do but to run? What can we do when there are so much trouble in the world to run? What can we do if there are war in the Middle East? Is to run, right? But there's nothing wrong with running. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Christians were persecuted during the time during the time of the apostles in the New Testament church, they ran. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 23, when they persecute you in one town, escape to another town. The brave Christian in the Middle East was beheaded by ISIS. We, we, know all, we all know the story. There are many. They were lined up. But there, there are times in which we need to stand in, with our faith. There's a story I remember. I, I, I know you heard about this story. There was a gathering, church gathering just like this. And then there were two terrorists with, with, with masks on them, with AK-2, AK-47. And they were worshiping. They were listening to the pastor, listening to the pastor just like this. And then these two men came to the church with an AK-47 and said, those who want to die for Christ, go in front. But those who do not want to die for your faith, you can live peacefully. And so many go out. Only the pastor, one worship leader, and two members stayed. And then they removed the cup and said, okay, pastor, you may proceed with your service. The hypocrites are all gone. You see, there are times in which God is testing our faith. You know, I said, there is nothing wrong with fleeing. You know, even now, how many years it's been since the war in Syria? You know, they go out from their, from their country because they want to survive, right? Or else they will be eliminated, they will be killed by these people who are in power. This is actually what is happening to David. He's, fle he's fleeing from his life. He's, he's fleeing from one king to another. In fact, actually, there are times in which God has given, according to, what, uh, to his friends, God has given Saul to him so he can kill him. Remember in the cave when Saul was sleeping, God has given him deep sleep. One of his friends, I think it was Joab, said, Look, God has delivered this your enemy to you. You can just kill this guy. If you don't want, I will take his spear and will trust it on his chest. But David says, no. Let not the anointed of God be killed by my hand. Let God himself. See, this is David showing his trust to God. That even in times of trouble, even in times of, of trial, even in times in which there is so much chaos around the world, his trust is in the Lord. There are times we need, as I said, to stand up in our faith. Right now, we live in perilous times. We live in times in which God's word is being mocked, as I said a while ago. There's no more moral values in our society. <coughs> if you go to our country, you will see our teenagers are not even married and yet they're having relationship. This is not happening before. <coughs> Maybe because I'm, you may say, Pastor, because you are so old now. <coughs> you among you is more than 50 years. And that is true. Before in our country, I remember in, during 1980, 1975 or 1980s, you know, before you can even touch the hand of the lady, you have to ask permission from her and even to her parents. And that's, that's how we value that's how we value the dignity of our women before 
You never see women or children wearing hanging clothes and shorts on the mall. But right now, go to the mall. You really have, you will be shocked, really. You're going to a, an, an escalator and you see an old lady wearing sando. It's cool shoe shop. This is not happening, as I said. Why are these things happening? Why are the values of our nation and other nations are being destroyed? This is because people continue to be higher than the Word of God Himself. They continue to put laws, laws that man thinks is good for them. You see, now we live in perilous times, as I said. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and holy, without love and forgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, this is the religious people in many nations. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. You know what this, this word means? The religious leader wearing clothes, wearing, wearing uh, you know, holy things, and yet, and yet in their life you will not see holiness or righteousness have nothing to do with such people, Paul admonished Timothy. What did David do? Or what can we do when the foundations are being destroyed? When moral values are coming to a decline, our commitment, we should not flee. We will not flee. This is what the word of David says. I have taken refuge in the Lord. How can you say to me, escape to the mountain like a bird? You see, as I said, there is nothing wrong fleeing from danger. But what is David is saying here, he's exhibiting his trust. He will flee, he will take refuge, but not on his own might. But he said, I will take refuge, I will take cover in the Lord. For he is my rock, he is my salvation. See, we are now facing tough times. We are now facing a time in which you can not even trust your neighbor. Do you believe me? Before, in our country, you can walk 2 a.m., 1 a.m. on the street and nobody will bother you. You can leave your things and nobody will steal it. But right now, it's different. Yes. That's why, you know, in our country, there's no more bad pack. It's all front pack. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Really, I don't know if it's happening in Africa. I don't know if it's happening in, in America. But this is true in every nation. There's no more bad pack because people are afraid that when they go home, their belongings is not there anymore in their bags. They lost. They will lose everything. That's why we, we embrace even eating. You know, it's weird. Here in, in Kuwait, we're used to putting our things, lap, uh, laptop, cell phones, wallet, on top of the table where you're eating, right? And I do this. This has been a habit of mine. And every time we go to the restaurant, I will leave my phone, my, my wallet on top, and my mother will always call me. This is not Kuwait. She said, take care of your belongings. <laughs> this not happened before. I miss our country when you can sleep with all your doors open, yes. when all your, your windows are open and nobody will bother you. Now, your house are all grilled, <laughs> locked <laughs> three, four times, and yet people still come in. It's totally chaotic now. I'm not only talking Philippines. I know in other parts of country it's happening. Even here in this country. I was here in 1998. You can leave your belongings outside. You can leave your things outside. Now it's totally different. You leave your phone on, on in, in a taxi, it's already switched off. Even in salon. I've heard this many times. You leave your phone in the salon, even inside, you know, they take your, your phone. See, all these things are happening because people <coughs> become more selfish. It's more about I, I, I. In times like this, 
David made a commitment. I will not flee from this disaster. I will face this with faith. For I know that God will never leave me. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that we are facing tough times. Even in this country, it's, it's quiet, but we, we just don't know. I don't want to, to fear you. I don't want to create fear in your heart. But something is happening in this country. And that's why what we need to do is to pray for the peace in this country. Amen. David did not flee. He faced his disaster with what will be our response in this time that the foundations are being destroyed that morality is coming to a lo to its lowest to its decline will we run and hide will we flee from the battle sometimes you have to stand and fight you may lose the battle you may be wounded you may not survive but we have to stand and fight for what we believe as i said a while ago there are many christians during the time of ISIS were beheaded because of their faith. They stand to the end. I just remember the time in which Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> in the book of Daniels, in the book of Daniel where Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they did not worship the idol that Nebuchadnezzar or that, that gold statue that Nebuchadnezzar built. They said, whoever will not worship in this statue will be burned or put in a furnace. And then these three men of God, these three J Jewish boys, did not bow down to that statue that Nebuchadnezzar did. And so his soldiers said, look at, O king, O great king, these three young men did not worship you. They did not bow down to that, to that magnificent statue that you built up. And then they were taken up by the soldiers of Nebuchadnezzar and says, why you defy the order of the king? And this is the word of the Meshach, of Meshach Sethra and Abendigo. He said, O great king, even the Lord our God that we serve will not save us from that burning fire, from that burning furnace. We will not bow down to you. Even if, even if we die. You see, the, the faith of these three young boys, they did not compromise their faith in times of peril. That even to the point of death, they will not give up. They will stand up in their faith. And so what did the king did? They, these three man, young men were thrown in that furnace, but nothing happened to them. They were bound in ropes, but the Bible says the word of God says only the rope was burned. Mm -hmm. Not even a single strand in their hair was burned. Amen. And it says that in the, in, the, in the scripture, it says that there is like the son of man, the son of God who is with them, walking with them. And even Daniel, remember Daniel when, again, in, during the time of King Darius, the, that the, his satraps, his governess was in with, with Daniel because he was righteous before, before God and before, before King Darius and they in with him for it. They cannot find anything against Daniel. So what they did, they, they made a decree in which the king signed that no one in 30 days will pray beside or to, to the other gods except to King Darius. And so what happened? After the decree was signed, Daniel went up to his room as he always does, opened the window and prayed facing Jerusalem. Instead of being afraid, he did the other, the other thing. The moment the sign or the decree was signed by the ring, the signet ring was signed by King Darius, the decree that moment, Daniel did not hide. He went up to his room, opened the door, and prayed. And for this, he was thrown in the lion's den. But we know, we all know that what happened, nothing happened to Daniel because of his faith. He did not flee. He stand his ground. He stand in faith even to the point of death. This is no time to flee and there is no place to go anyway. What did David do? We will, he did not fear. So we also as Christians should not fear. For look, the wicked string their bows. They put an arrow on the bowstring to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. David is being quite literal. At one point, we understand that Saul was trying to pin him with a spear. 
Remember one time when King Saul asked David to pray for him because he was being attacked by a demon or a spirit that makes him that makes him crazy. And every time David will play, he will get his spear and shoot or put David or want to kill David so David will flee. But there was no fear you can find in the heart of David. David was was immovable in his faith. It's always good to know what you are up against. Sometimes, though we don't know who are we up, we are, who are we up against. Sometimes it is our own friends. Sometimes it is our own family. There are times, as I said, that we will be persecuted because of our faith. It happened during the New Testament church and it's happening. You know, there are many churches even in Africa being burned because of their faith. They're being burned alive inside the church because of their faith in Christ. But they stand still. They did not flee. They did not fear even to the point of death. That's how, that's how they stand firm on their faith. The word translated foundations here refers to the moral and spiritual underpinnings of any society. What can the righteous do when the foundation crumble beneath them? What can we do when we see our nations losing, disappearing its moral values? What can we do when, when our political government is so corrupt that people are suffering because of their selfishness. What can we do as Christians? Shall we quit? Shall we despair? Shall we run away? Shall we become bitter? Or shall we take matters in our own, own hands? For Christians, what can we do? If the foundation are destroyed, well, it all depends on how we see our God. In this scripture alone, we see how God sees his God. David sees his God. He has confidence that God's presence will not leave him. Hallelujah. The Lord is in, hol is, is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. This is the way David is saying that God is everywhere. That wherever he goes, God will be with him. God will protect him. God will be his refuge. God will be his strong tower. God will be his deliverer in times of trouble. <clears throat> but right at this point, we see the fundamental difference between believer and unbeliever. We see those who stand in faith and those who do not stand in their faith. We believe there is God who sits on his throne of the throne of the universe, a God who is immovable, just like with what we sang. A God that is unshakable. You know, God is not surprised that this is, this is happening in every nation. God is not surprised that his word is being mocked. God is not surprised that people continue to go in, into, into a down spiral with their moralities, with their values. He's not surprised at all. God is not surprised that nations attack after nations. He's not surprised. He's not even startled. These things has to happen. Remember the time last week when we studied the end times? We are now in the last days. If you'll open your eyes, everything that is being recorded in the scripture is happening before our very own eyes. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah when God destroyed it because of sexual immorality? This is again being repeated. History is repeating itself. Before, as I said, homosexuality is being hidden, but now it's being promoted in every movies, even, even in our culture, in our society. It's being promoted. And once you, you tell word against them, they will bash back at you. But before they hide, but now, you see, this is what is happening to our society. In America itself, the rising spiral of violence is happening. 
just recently there was racial you know what this young man traveled i don't know from where from ohio going to texas just to kill all these hispanic people this is racial discrimi discrimination this is happening everywhere even in our own country even in parts of africa even parts of indonesia in india so what shall we do when the foundation of our society is destroyed because of greed because of because of ideas because of opinions what shall we do that's the, the answer as i said is that how we see our god is our god in control in spite of all these things is happening around us yes he is he sits on his throne he continues to be in power he is a sovereign god he is immovable god he's not surprised that all these things is happening but why my question is why are this happening in our time well we don't have a choice this is our time what are we going to do that is my question can we stand in our faith or we just ignore and go with the flow you see even in a, in, in in movies even in in television series they promote homosexuality right now they, they promote sex same-sex marriage in every nation even in our country they are already proposing a bill for this what shall we do shall we keep quiet or should we should, should we raise our voice in dispute publicly One Greek teacher in a prominent seminary remarked that the hardest verse in the Bible to believe is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. What is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He says, this is the very hard, this is the very, the hardest verse in the Bible to believe. Why? Because he said, if you cannot believe that God did not create the heavens and the earth, then you cannot believe the rest of the Bible. And that is true. This is actually the easiest if you will believe, if you truly believe that God created, that God sits in His throne, that God is in control, no matter or regardless of what's happening in our country, what's happening around the nations, if you believe that God is sovereign, you will believe the rest of His word in the Bible, in His word. Amen? In the beginning, God created, created the heavens and the earth. That's what Genesis 1.1 1, 1 says. If you can believe, he said, this word, you will not have a hard time believing the rest of the word of God. In Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. You know what happened to this? King Uzziah was one of the righteous leader or king of Judah. The time King Uzziah died is the time their kingdom fall into sin, into idolatry worship, <coughs> idolatry worship. It's a time when king, the righteous leader, you know, this happens in every nation, and it's biblical. If your leader is righteous, expect the people to be righteous. If your leader is corrupt, except expect the people to be corrupt. This is happening, as I said, in every nation. But be, be very make sure that God's judgment will come. Our confidence that God will not keep His eyes on the wicked. His eyes watch. He examines everyone. The Lord examines the righteous and the wicked. He hates the lover of violence. He will rain burning coals and sulfur on the wicked. A scorching wind will be their portion. You see right now you may say, well, the wicked are prospering. The corrupt are, are getting wealthy. The corrupt are getting big <coughs> houses. The corrupt people are getting, they're living in, in palaces while we live in, in, in slums. Yes, maybe this time. But there will be coming a time, there will, they will be judged by a just God. Amen? Today, maybe, maybe they are enjoying their blood thirsty 
ways. But there will come a time when God will judge them according to their deeds. No one gets away with anything. Amen? God, you may cover yourself, you may, you may make a smile, you may show kindness, but inside, you are doing it only for what? For your own selfish gain. But God sees everything. We cannot hide from God. We can hide from people, but God searches all, even our thoughts, even our hearts, even right now, He knows your thoughts. He knows your ways. Nothing can be hidden from, from the eyes of God. The eyes of God is always looking. And even right now, He continues to look at our heart, the motives of our hearts. These words of David reminds us reminds us that there is solemn and eternal difference between the righteous and the wicked. The difference, you know, sometimes is easy to distinguish. You can see right away, for example, I'll give you an example. If you go to a basketball game, you know the fans of the Golden State Warriors when Curry is shooting the ball, right? You know the fans of Lakers when LeBron James is shooting the ball. But you know what? When you go to a cemetery, you will never know who is beside who. If you walk to the graveyard, you cannot just judge or see who is the righteous and who is the wicked. They are all below six feet under the ground. You cannot even just say, because there is scripture in that, in that uh, what you call, in that lapida, you know, in that grave, uh, gravestone. You cannot tell it who is lying here and who is lying there, but God sees everything. God sees what this person did when he was alive. God sees his ways. It was not hidden from him. Saints and sinners rest, set by, set, uh, rest side by side, six feet under the ground. You cannot tell who is the righteous from the wicked by reading the gravestones, but it is God who sees everything. The whole point of this verse is that, <coughs> see, if God sees everything, then why do we need to hide? Why we need, do we need to be afraid to voice out, to stand on our faith? Because at the end of everything, all these things will perish. All these material things in the world will perish. Amen? What will be left only? We will be standing in front of the throne judgment seat of God. And he will not say, what did you accomplish on earth? He will not ask you how many mansions, how many cars, how many houses, or what degree. He will ask you, what did you did for me? The Bible is very clear. Just like the last message, whatever you did to the least of my brother of mine, the Lord Jesus Christ says, you did it to me. Whatever good thing we did, for the glory of God, we did it for God Himself. We did it to God Himself. Amen. Even the glass of water He said that you give to my servant, you did it to me. You see, right now, maybe you will see, well, I don't see God judging the wicked. I don't see right now God judging wicked nation, wicked ruler. Yes, as I said. They are enjoying their lives right now. But everything will come to an end. It's not permanent. Even our trials, as I said, are temporary. The things, the hard things, the hardship, the trials that we're going through are all temporary. It's not permanent. Because our hope is not here. Our hope is in heaven. Our hope is in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. God, David understands his confidence in God, that God will deliver him. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright will see his face. The Lord stands up for those who stand up for him. He takes the side of those who side with him. David understands his God. He knew that during these tough times, he knew that during this hardship, he is not alone in his battle. Hallelujah. We are not alone in this battle. Amen? We are not alone. Though the battle may be fierce, remember that we are not alone in this battle. There is still God who sits in His throne, who sees everything. We might ask ourselves, 
why are those wicked people continue to be in power? But God sees it. Someone says wisely, this may be bad times, but they're the only times we are given. That is true. Remember, hope is still a Christian virtue. As I said, no matter how chaotic, no matter this world is coming to an end, we have hope in Christ. We have hope in God. Amen? And this preacher is right on all counts. These are bad times because our leaders are spiritually corrupt and morally blind. But why should we despair? If God is on His throne, then we should rejoice because this is our time. What can we do by sight? Amen? Today, we might stumble along, the, along this line. And that is natural. It is normal. But we have God who can raise us back up again. Amen? We can raise up on our feet and go on, or go on again on this journey. Today is not the last day. There is better days coming. Hallelujah. We know this world is not getting better. We cannot do about it. It's coming to an end. Even the the temperature. You see how long you, I don't know how long you've been in Kuwait. I've been here in Kuwait for the last 20 years, 21 years. During summer, I've never experienced this so hot like this. I've never experienced summer 52, 53. It's not happening. But you see, this year I think it's the hottest. See, even the weather is chaotic. Even the weather is changing. You see, if you will just open your eyes, the world is coming to an end. And we cannot do anything about it. Should we be afraid? No, we should not. What we need to do is to pray. Amen. To pray that this thing, that the end of the world will not come on our time. But we cannot control it. It is in God's hand. Amen. As He see the man, as He see the world, as He see nation after nation being corrupt, being wicked, being lawless, well, God's judgment will come very soon. Whether we like it or not. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Make no mistake. As I said, the foundations are destroyed in the very, in, in our very own eyes, in front of our own very eyes. Long-head moral values are being jettisoned, jettisoned in favor of new morality that is really no morality at all. What can the righteous do? Well, I have no political view on that. But what we can do is to stay <coughs> or stand in our faith. We will not give to fear. Amen? Amen. When the foundations are being de destroyed, we need a fresh view of God. A long view of history that God who sees all things will judge the wicked and bring down it. In the end, the righteous will see God's favor. The righteous will see God's favor. I love that in verse 7. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright will see His face. You know what this verse means? Regardless of what happens in the world, regardless if the world will come to an end, the righteous will see the face of God. Amen. He will see His deliverance. He will see His salvation. Hallelujah. As I said, this is not our permanent home. I can summarize these three words. When the foundations are being destroyed, we need a fresh view of God and a long view of history. The God who sees all things will judge the wicked and bring them down in the end and the righteous will see God's face. By the grace of God has given me, it says here in 1 Corinthians. <coughs> See, in spite of all the chaos happening around us, who is our strong foundation? It is Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus Christ is our strong foundation. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as, wise, as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ says, whoever has my word and do it is like a man who built his house on a rock. Storms comes, earthquake comes, problems and trial comes, but he stands firmly because he stands in the rock. But whoever who hears this word of mine says the Lord Jesus Christ and does not do them, 
It's like a man who built his house in a sand, a sand that is sinking. This is where people think that they're above the sovereignty of God by making their own law, by defying the law of God. But you know what? They are sinking, yet they do not know it. We are standing on the rock of our salvation. Even though the moral and ethical foundation may be eroding, we should ask God that we should be true to our faith. Amen? That regardless of what's happening around us, we stand firm till the end. Paul says this to Timothy, I have finished the race. I have fought a good fight of faith. You see, it's my prayer that even times, hard times will come. You know, this is just a glimpse of what is happening and what's going to happen in our world. This is what we call a tip of the iceberg. The hardship that you see around us, the corruption that you see around us, people are getting worse. They are getting greedier and self selfish every day. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Temperature are going crazy. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There, there is more chaos that is going to come in our way. What can the righteous do when the foundation crumble? What can the righteous do when the foundation of God's moral values are destroyed by man? What can the righteous do? We can stand in our faith. We can stand on the rock of our salvation because he's, He alone is a strong foundation. Jesus alone is a strong foundation. Regardless what happened, Jesus is our hope. He is the cure to the world that the world continues to reject. Men continues to earn their way to God thinking that their good deeds will earn them a ticket to heaven. But no one is righteous, the Bible says. No, not even one. Man continues to work their way, but God, out of His love, His amazing love for us, offered salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. That whoever believes in His, what He did on the cross of Calvary, He gave His life so that we can get to heaven, so we can, we can be with God, so we can be reconciled in spite of our sins because Jesus paid it on the cross when He was nailed, when He died, but He did not remain dead. He was risen after three days so that those who will believe in Him will also share with His glory, share the eternal life that God has given Him. Hallelujah. What can the righteous do? Stand in faith. Continue to pray. You know, be tenacious. I love this word. Be tenacious. Win some. When people bash you, when people persecute you because of your faith, be tenacious. Don't give up. Continue to pray. When there are people that are unloving, love them anyway. When there are people who provokes you to anger, be patient anyway. When you're losing hope or becoming hopeless, pray. Continue to pray. Don't give up. When you see around you, people around you, you cannot trust anymore, just continue to hope anyway. You see, be tenacious. Stand in your faith. Because there are more hard times to come. God is preparing us for the hardest time, hardest time to come. So be tenacious. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Be confident that God is going to do something. Be confident that God will not turn His eyes on the wicked. He will judge the wicked. He will punish the wicked. We as believers who continue to see how great and mighty God is, continue to sit on His throne. Let us all bow our heads.